Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video, and this is my updated house prediction for the 2022 midterm elections, the second to last one. We're getting closer and closer to the big day, like, I don't know, like 10 days or so, maybe less, because I'm, being, I'm recording this on the 29th of October, so let's take a look. Right now, as you can see, I have taken, I have blanked out toss up every single competitive district or supposedly competitive district for into 270 as well as throw in my own competitive districts because these are districts that I believe will be competitive that's not being talked about for some strange reason um, and we'll get to that here in a, here later but let's get into it starting off Democrats will start off with 142 seats and the Republicans will have 185 seats straight off the bat Republicans have a slight edge, nothing in Alabama, let's go straight to Alaska. Alaska polling has Mary Patola very high on the food chain, Nick Begich and Sarah Palin really not giving, doing each other any favors. Chris Bayh is just there. Hopefully he outperforms the 3% that polling has him at. But as of right now, I'm going to have this race as lean Democrat. Patola probably wins by 3-4% to 4 over Nick Begich in the final round. I doubt Sarah Palin ends up in second again. After her embarrassing loss, it'll probably be Nick Begich who has an embarrassing loss. Uh, now we go down to the state of Arizona, where we have quite a few. David Schweikert is currently in a blue district, a Biden plus one district. By the way, I am predicting an R plus five national environment right now. I think I had R plus one last time I did this, but now I'm predicting an R plus five, so a four point boost for the Republicans, um, which would be a ten point shift to the right nationally. Um, I think David Schweikert will end up beating Jevin Hogg by around seven or eight points. Schweikert's very unpopular ever. It's a red wave. That will help him. Uh, Tom O'Halloran, he'll probably outperform the polling. He'll probably, you know, he'll still lose by safe, not polling, but the national environment. But Eli Crane's a pretty good candidate. However, I think if Republicans really wanted to embarrass Tom O'Halloran, they should have nominated a Native American, which they easily could have. But Eli Crane will do. He'll probably end up winning by 13 to 14 points um, instead of, you know, the 18 if this was just a regular uh, election. Then Tom O'Hanlon wasn't the incumbent, I mean. Next up, Arizona's 4th District, Greg Stanton, very popular incumbent governor. A uh, Biden plus 10 district. I think Stanton will end up winning by around 2 points over Kelly Cooper. Again, uh, Stanton, very popular. It's going to take a lot for him to lose this district because he's popular, because he's the former mayor of Phoenix. Uh, so I still think Staten will win. Uh, next up, Arizona 6th District wants Siskamani versus Kirsten Engel. Uh, this district probably goes to Siskamani anywhere from 8 to 9 percentage points. Siskamani is a really good candidate. Kirsten Engel, just a normal, boring Democrat. Uh, and that will be everything for the state of Arizona. Nothing in Arkansas. Let's go down to California. California has a lot of... Uh, competitive districts when you talk about California's third district I believe Kevin Kiley wins this by safe margin anywhere from 10 to 11 points he is a perfect fit for the district the district that is trending blue he will create a personal fiefdom in this district and it will take a massive blue wave to get him out of Congress next up Josh Harder's district California's ninth Harder is going to be in a very competitive district it's Tom Patey I think he's going to end up winning by around one to two points if not tilt though I'm going to give it to Josh Harder. Um, I think Republicans should have nominated someone better. I don't think Tom Patty has enough name recognition to beat Harder. But we go down to California's 13th district right here. Uh, Adam Gray is currently facing off against John Duarte. I think this is going to be a very close race. I think he's going to end up winning by around 1%. Adam Gray keep flipping a, well, giving Democrats a net a gain in California with, you know, California's 13th as it would be a gain for either party. Next up, California's 22nd district. David Valadeo has really disillusioned his party. Rudy Salas is a blue dog Democrat, from what I understand. I think, if I'm not mistaken, a blue dog association, a blue dog Democrat pack is funding Rudy Salas. So we may end up getting a member of the blue dog coalition if Salas does win. However, I do think this is going to be close. I think Salas is going to narrowly beat Valadeo. Um, again, it really depends if Valadeo can you know, get the base together behind him, even after his impeachment voting against Donald Trump. It really all depends. Next up, Raul Ruiz. Finally, after months of me saying this district is going to be competitive, 270 and all these other 
pundits are finally saying your other district is going to be competitive. I told you it was going to be competitive. Likely Democrats. Ruiz is going to end up winning by five to six points over Brian Hawkins. Brian Hawkins, I believe, is a really good candidate, in my humble opinion. Next up, Julia Brownlee. I don't think this district will be competitive right now. I think she'll end up winning by anywhere to 10 to 12 points. Um, it is a Biden plus 20 district. Again, it ha like Julia Brownlee, I really don't think will lose. We need a massive red wave in order to get her out. Next up, California's 27th district. Mike Garcia is probably going to end up winning likely, if not safe. The Democrats literally just hold everything in terms of funding from Christy Smith. She's a two-time loser, about to be a three-time loser. Uh, hopefully, like, Democrats get their shit together and get someone else to face off against Garcia in 2024, since that's their biggest chance to get him out of Congress, since he is actually a danger to them nationally, because he is a big VP pick for anyone. Like, Trump, DeSantis, Jim Justice, anyone. So, he is Garcia is a threat, but... You know, I like Mike Garcia, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying, on Democrats' term, they really need to figure their shit out. Next up, California's 40th district, Young Kim versus Asif Mahmood. And I think I pronounced that right. Um, I think Kim's going to end up winning by 10 to 12 points. She's a very popular incumbent representative. She'll win safe. Same thing with Ken Calvert. Um, he did underperform in the primary, but I don't think that'll, I don't think that matters. He'll probably end up winning by 11 or 12 points. Michelle Steele, um... She'll end up winning by, like, six to eight points. From what I understand, Jay Chen has connections to the Chinese Communist Party, which, not good. I could move this to safe. Because of that, I'm, a lot of Democrats probably won't be very favorable of that, and it's a very moderate district. And so this could end up being a double-digit victory for Michelle Steele. Uh, next up, California's 47th, 49th. These two are very similar districts. Scott Bogue, Brian Marriott, you know, they're running okay campaigns. Katie Porter and Mike Levin not running good campaigns, if you want my honest opinion. I do think this is going to be very close. It couldn't end up being tilt Democrat, but Republicans would really need like an R plus 7 national environment, in my honest opinion, to flip these two districts because, you know, Democrat turnout is going to be relatively high due to the jobs decision. Not enough to where it's like, oh no, moderate wave. It's going to be a red wave, guys. Chill the fuck out. Next up, Amy Barra's district. I've been saying this for months. This district is going to be competitive. You guys can back me up. I've been saying Amy Barra is going to be in a somewhat competitive race. He'll end up winning it by nine points, anywhere from seven and nine. Tamika Hamilton is a good candidate, in my opinion, though Amy Barra will end up winning this district. And I believe that is everything in California. Next up, we go down to the state of Colorado. There are three districts. Lauren Boebert, she wins safe. I don't like her, but it's a Trump plus eight district. Come on, guys. She's going to end up winning. You, even over Adam Frisch. Come on. Like, anyone saying this race is going to be competitive needs to get their head checked. Uh, next up, we have Colorado's 7th district. This one will probably go to Brittany Peterson by around two to four points. It's a Biden plus 14 district. I don't think our Eric Odlin has run that great of a campaign. Uh, next up, Colorado's 8th. Um, I think Barbara Kirkmeyer wins this likely. I think she wins anywhere from five to six. Uh, she's a good candidate. She's held a countywide office in the district, I believe. She'll beat Yadira Caravea, who I also believe is a good candidate. Uh, will appeal to Hispanics in the district. That is everything in Colorado. Next up, we go down to the state of Connecticut, where we have two competitive districts. Joe Courtney and Johanna Hayes, both of these districts could flip Republican. Uh, I think we're going to see a disappointment here. I just have a gut feeling in it. I don't, like, Democrats are spending a lot of money here. Republicans aren't really paying that much attention here for some god ungodly reason. It'll be close. France and Logan will barely lose to these two. Just barely, however. Don't be surprised if these two flip, though. I'm just saying it's, it, I think we're going to see disappointment. Delaware. Why Delaware? Well, because uh, she's an underperformer. Lisa Rochester underperforming. I think we could see this seat become even more competitive if Ken Simpler, the uh, treasurer of Delaware, who's a Republican, elected statewide, ran as the nominee. However, I think Rochester wins by seven, anywhere from five to seven. Massive underperformer Rochester is, so likely Democrat in Delaware. Next up, we go down to the state of Florida, where uh, Stephanie Mer or Corey, Mill, Corey Mills, who I heard a lot of bullshit about, honestly, like, 
people are saying this guy's going to be the next Dan Crenshaw. If anything, he's pretty libertarian. Pretty against the whole idea of interventionism. I don't see him being the next Dan Crenshaw. He's backed by people like Ted Cruz. I doubt Cruz would back a Crenshaw-type candidate. And Karen Green, not a great candidate. Uh, the Mills wins by likely by a safe margin, anywhere from 15 to 16 points. Florida's 13th, Anna Luna, she probably wins safe as well. Laura Lee, she beats Alan Cohn safe. Uh, finally, people are finally acknowledging Florida's 23rd district being competitive. I think uh, Moskowitz ends up winning by anywhere from three to four points. He's a good candidate against Joe Bud. It was not bad. It was okay, I guess. Next up, Maria Salazar. She wins safe. She's very popular in her district. And at today, a, a good candidate. She'd absolutely beat Salazar in a blue wave. Um, but Salazar is it's a red wave. Salazar is just unstoppable right now. Next up, again, another candidate that I'm thinking, you know, is like, you know, is a big name in the House Democrat caucus. However, he's going to be in a competitive district. Um, I think if Scotty Moore gets a bit more funding, this could be in the lean territory. I think uh, Darren Soto wins by 5-7 to seven right now. He's going to be in a competitive race. Not too competitive, however. He'll sweat a little bit. but They won't call his seat right away. They'll call it like 30 minutes to an hour afterwards. So it'll give Democrats a heart attack for like a little bit. But then it'll be like, whew, that was close. You know, like how stuff happens. Next up, Lois Frankel's district. No one's expecting these, by the way. She'll have a competitive dish grill. She'll win by 6-8. to eight. Dan Frenzies, in my opinion, a phenomenal candidate for the district. However, he's, you know, a Republican in a Biden plus 18 district. Not going to happen. However, it will be closer than normal. Next up, we go down to the state of Georgia. Uh, we have Georgia's second congressional district, Chris West. I think Jeremy Hunt would have flipped this district, if you want my honest opinion. He was a really good candidate. Chris West, I can't do it. You, he can't appeal to the rural African-American voters like Sanford Bishop can. I think this is going to be a lean margin. Sanford Bishop wins by four or more. This could end up being likely. So um, if you're a Republican, don't hold your breath here. I highly doubt Sanford Bishop loses. Um, I'll be shocked, but uh, I think Jeremy Hunt would have absolutely won this district. Uh, next up, nothing in Hawaii, nothing in Idaho. We go down to Illinois where there are quite a few competitive districts here. Sean Caston's district. Keith Macau is a really good candidate. He's the mayor of Springs Hill, I think. I think that's it. Someone correct me. He's a mayor of like a town in the district, very popular in the town. This will be very competitive. I think this is going to be tilt with Democrat, actually. Like, I, I honestly do. Sean Caston is going to, like, have a panic attack because it's going to be so close. I'm joking. Like, hey, I, I have panic attacks. Let me joke about it, okay? It's I got the pass. <laughs> it's going to be close. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Keith Bacow ends up winning. It would be a big blow for the Democrat caucus to lose a major member of the caucus in Sean Caston. But I don't think it's going to happen. Next up, Illinois 11, Bill Foster. He'll clobber Catalina Loft by five or points or more. Catalina Loft's a god off candidate. Bill Foster should take care of her easily. Illinois 13th, Nikki Budzinski and Reagan Deering are in a pretty competitive race. However, I think Budzinski should narrowly hold it by a point or two. Lauren Underwood, she's a phenomenal candidate for Illinois' 4th district, a phenomenal representative. However, due to the nature of the wave, I think she'll end up winning by around two to three points over Scott Greider. Um, I think Republicans really needed to nominate a African American for this district, who's like economically conservative, but or not or socially conservative, who appeals to the black voters who are typically socially conservative, socially moderate, and economically progressive or populist. So you really needed like a populist African American figure. You needed like a Byron Donalds kind of candidate in order to beat Underwood. Uh, next up, we have Cherry Bustos. District, Illinois 17th District. I honestly think uh, this will go lean Republican. Esther King will probably win by around two or three points over Eric Sorensen. Very white working class heavy district. And again, another district I'm saying is going to be competitive. I'm warning you, it is going to be competitive is Illinois 8th District. Roger Krishnamurthy will sweat in the district. Chris Dargis will make him only win by five points in a Biden plus 15 district. And Krishnamurthy is a uh, underperformer as it is anyway, so it could be a lean margin for all we know. Uh, onward to the next state, that being Indiana. 
and the state of Indiana, we have the first district. Frank Mervin is a really good candidate for his district, a really good representative. He's running against Jennifer Ruth Green, who is also a good candidate. I think this will be a very narrow victory for Jennifer Ruth Green. She'll win by 1% or more, or less, I mean. So it'll be very close. I do think Ruth Green will narrowly pull it off. Next up, we go down to the state of Iowa, where all but one district is supposed to be competitive. Uh, of course, I honestly think Meek, Miller Meeks and Henson will both win by safe margin. The Iowa Democrat Party is honestly in disarray. But there are two major statewide party candidates are literally just one's got a sex scandal or a sexual assault, a sexual assault scandal, and the other one lost a uh, treasurer election in a blue wave year. And people are expecting her to make this close on a red wave year. I don't buy it, honestly. Same thing with Beto O'Rourke in Texas. But uh, Cindy Axney, however, honestly, I don't know what she's thinking campaigning with Joe Biden. But it's going to backfire. She's going to lose by 10 points, as heck known. I guarantee it. She'll lose safe. Next up, Kansas, where we have the 3rd Congressional District. Sheriff Dave is a good representative for her district. However, it's due to the wave year. I honestly do believe Amanda Adkins will end up defeating her by around five to six points. A likely margin. This race could end up being lean Republican. I think Adkins will narrowly beat her out. She'll probably lose in 2024, but that's then. This is now. Next up, we have Maine 2nd Congressional District. Bruce Poliquin, not a great candidate. I honestly think Jared Golden wins by anywhere from five points to honestly double digits. Golden probably, if he wins, he's probably going to set himself up for a Senate race in 2024 if Angus King uh, retires. And Jared Golden, if he wins a nomination, main Senate race is safety. I'm just saying. Um, next up, we have uh, Maryland. We have Maryland's 6th Congressional District. Uh, David Trone is not really popular in his district. Neil Parrott is not a good fit for the district either. Uh, Neil Parrott's a bit too conservative for the area. Uh, this... The, this large area right here is very suburban, which could backfire on Neil Parrott. However, outside of the suburbs, we have these mountainous rural areas, which Parrott will do very well in. But you need someone who could appeal. You need a Glenn Youngkin type candidate for that. I don't think Parrott's going to win. It's going to be very close. I think David Trone narrowly picks off, picks off a victory here in Maryland 6th District. Now we go on to the state of Massachusetts, which does have a competitive district. Nobody's talking about it. But in Massachusetts' tale... Uh, I think Jeff Deal is going to help Jesse Brown. Uh, Dan Tran Dean Tran could end up making this race closer than expected. I'm expecting Trahan to win by 18 right now, though it could be like 12 or 13. He's a good candidate. But Jesse Brown is probably going to be helped by Jeff Deal, as Jeff Deal is very popular in this district. I think William Keating will end up winning by 6 to 8 points. It'll be Keating's closest election to date. Next up is the state of Michigan, I believe. Yep, it's Michigan. We have four close races. Um, I think John Gibbs is probably going to win. Hillary Shulton is a very generic D, which, you know, if the wave isn't as big as I'm saying it is, Shulton will probably win and flip the district. However, I think Gibbs is going to end up winning by a point or two. Uh, Tom Barrett, he's probably going to end up beating Alicia Slotkin by around eight points or more. Tom Barrett's a really good candidate for the district. Dan Kildee, uh, he's... I don't want to say he's unpopular in his district, but he's not popular either. Uh, be as progressives are taking a massive hit this election cycle. And Dan Kildee will be one of those people. I do believe Paul Jung will beat Dan Kildee by around five points. Um, due to the wave. Uh, Paul Jung could probably uh, win re-election in 2024. However, in Michigan's 10th, I expect John James to win by double digits. No questions asked. Next up, we have the da, 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 we have Minnesota. We have two competitive districts. Brad Feinst Finstead, he'll win safe, no questions about it. Trump plus nine district? Are you kidding me? Uh, if Richard Painter was the Dem nominee, this race could be competitive, but he's not going to be. It's Jeff Ettinger. Next up, we have Minnesota's second district. Tyler Kistner. I think Tyler Kistner is actually going to pick it off this time. He'll be DOA in twenty twenty four, but. Well, not DOA, but I'll, I'll make a tier list one day about, like, hey, blah, blah, blah. I think uh, Kistner went by two at the end of the day against Angela Craig, flipping Minnesota's second district. I've People told me it's not going to happen, man. It's Minnesota. It's not going to happen. I honestly believe it's going to happen, so uh, I'll bet money on it. Ryan Zankville went safe. 
I don't think any scandal will take Zink down unless it's a blue wave. And Monica Tranel's not a good candidate. Zink wins by like 15 or more. Let's see, what's next? Uh, we go down to the state of Nebraska, where we take a look at Nebraska's second congressional district. I think Don Bacon wins by around seven points or more. Don Bacon's really popular in his district. He'll probably win by double digits, but I'm going to be safe and put it as likely for right now. Next up, the state of Nevada. Now, with Republican hopes of winning every single seat in Nevada, their hopes have really come back to life, honestly. I think every single competitive district will go lean. I think April Becker will end up winning by around three to four points, while D while Sam Peters and Mark Robinson wins by one, around one to two points. Every single one of them will lose. Steve Horsford might actually be likely because he's really unpopular in the district. But I really do believe every single district will go red this election cycle. Trends in Nevada are very unfavorable to Democrats, and the national environment is very unfavorable to Democrats. And honestly, if a state is a district is less is was won by Biden by less than nine points. It's probably going to flip due to the national environment shifting ten points to the right, unless something special occurs, like in several areas we've already discussed. Another state delegation that Republicans are hoping to flip and is looking like they will flip is New Hampshire. Bob Burns, honestly, the worst person the Republicans could have fucking nominated. Could have. Ann Custer's not great. Trust me, she's not. But Bob Burns is awful. Okay? And he'll... And I, he's going to win. Bob Burns is going to win. And then he's going to get fucking crushed in 2024. Watch, he will. Ann Custer's probably going to run again and then beat Bob Burns by double digits. I fucking guarantee it. Bob Burns is going to win by less than 1%. It's going to be one of the most competitive districts this cycle. But Burns is going to nearly squeak ahead and then he's going to get fucking crushed in two years. Well, Caroline Levitt will probably end up beating uh, Chris Pappas by around 3 to 4 points. She's a good candidate. Chris Pappas, pretty popular, but the national environment is very unfavorable to Pappas. I guarantee you Pappas and Custer will both run again next year and probably out and probably beat both Levitt and Burns. So New Hampshire delegation will be red for like two years. So Next up, we go down to the state of New Jersey. Also, sorry about that. I had to get that rant out, out, of, my, out of me. Uh, next up. New Jersey, New Jersey's third district, Andy Kim. I don't see how he's popular in his district. His district is uh, very conservative. I'm just going to say that. His district very, very conservative, but he's popular nonetheless. I'm going to say Andy Kim wins by around three points. Conservative down ballot. I, I know what y'all are about to say. It's conservative down ballot. Uh, on top of ballot, not so much, but down ballot it is. He probably wins by around three to four points over Bob Healy. Josh Gothheimer, he's got the Frank Pallotta is really not that good of a candidate. I think Kothheimer wins by two points or more. Tom Kane, phenomenal candidate. He almost beat Malinowski last year. He wins by double digits. No questions about it. Mickey Sherrill, she's in a competitive district as well. She's going to be in a competitive race. She's not that great of a candidate. Paul DeGroot will still lose, but she'll probably win by five points or more. Next up, Frank Pallone and Belle Pasquale. These two are going to be a competitive district. And nobody's going to see it. They'll both win by a likely margin. And it's going to be like, oh my god, I can't believe that those two were in a competitive race. I can't believe they didn't win by double digits. Well, guess what? I called it. And everyone's going to call me crazy because I am crazy. Next up, the state of New Fuck. I guess the state of New Mexico. Not New Fuck, but New Mexico. Honestly, if Republicans get a massive red wave, every single seat here could go red. But you've got to do, like, you've got to shift the national environment 15 points to the right which would be like an R plus 10 environment, which I, it's not going to happen. Uh, Biden's approval has to be really bad. But uh, Milani Stonsberry, she's probably going to end up winning by three to four points. Michelle, honestly, Republicans have a phenomenal bench, as well as the Democrats. Like, they, all six of these candidates are phenomenal. Yvette Harrell, she'll probably win by around three to four points. For some reason, Republicans are setting her up on the national stage, which is interesting. I wonder what's going to happen with that, as she's being propped up a bunch. A bunch. Maybe it's because she's in a very blue district. We'll just have to wait and find out. Fernandez, uh, her district, Nevada, New Mexico's third. That's going to be tilt. I wouldn't be surprised if Alexis Martinez Johnson ends up winning here, which would ups be upsetting for Democrats. It'll be like, no, doom, or whatever. But uh, Fernandez will probably narrowly win over uh, her opponent, Johnson. Next up, we go down to the state of New York, where we have plenty of competitive districts. Lee Zeldin is in a tight race for governor, and now we have another great candidate, Nicholas Lalada, a phenomenal candidate. Uh, 
just really good in my opinion. A really good solid candidate. He wins by double digits. Garber Reno, he wins by double digits. Thomas Suzy's district. Suzy's retiring. We got Robert Zimmerman, who is nothing like Suzy. And we're running against George Santos, who is uh, kind of a Rockefeller Republican. And conservatives are saying he's kind of caving out on issues. Well, they're going to have to deal with him in Congress because, well, he's going to win. Probably around a point or two over Zimmerman. Yeah, he's probably going to win. Kathleen Rice's district, she's retiring. Don't know why. Anthony De 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 Esposito, he is a really good candidate. Uh, however, he's not going to win. Laura Gillen will probably win by around three points or more. Malia Takis, she's a great congresswoman. She'll win by safe margin. New York 17th. Uh, this one's going to be competitive. Maloney's in a competitive district, and if Republicans win here, if Michael Lawler wins this district, that's a big blow to, like, the Democrat leadership, or the, like, Democrat big shots in Congress, I guess you could say, and Maloney's one of those big shots, as we spoke in thread. I think it's going to be a tilt margin. Pat Ryan, he's okay. I don't have an opinion on him, though, if he wins, he's a really good candidate if he ends up winning, but Colin Schmidt, he's probably going to end up narrowly beating out Pat Ryan by a point or so. Next up, Mark Molinaro's district, now you're at 19th. Uh, Molinaro's probably going to win by five points or more. John Katko's district, New York's 22nd. Brandon Williams, it'll be interesting to see how he does in Congress because I do have him winning by like two points. Francis Connolly, Connolly, not a good candidate. Brandon Williams, I'm very interesting to see, interested to see how he carries himself in Congress. Another district that no one's paying attention to. New York's 20th district, Paul Tonko's district. He'll probably win by a likely margin. This one will be competitive. Elizabeth Joy will take a lot of the suburban vote away from Tonko. Uh, you know, outside of the uh, Albany area. This this district consists of Albany, right? I'm not good with geography. I'm awful with it. Next up, North Carolina, my home state. The great, best state in the nation, if you want my honest opinion. Uh, this district, God, I hate Sandy Smith with a fucking passion. I think she's going to nearly beat Don Davis. I hope she loses. She's an awful fit for the district. But Don Davis will probably end up losing very narrowly to Sandy Smith. Next up, Kathy Manning's district. Uh, she's running against Christian Castelli. Castelli, not a great candidate. Manning probably wins by two points. Bo Hines, he probably wins. He's a really good candidate. Probably wins by eight points or more. Jeff Jackson. His district, North Carolina, is 14th. Jackson probably beats Pat Harrigan by around six points or more. Harrigan's not really that great of a candidate, in my honest opinion. And I don't know when this happened, but Republicans have, you know, won the majority in Congress. Um, uh, nothing in Dakota. Now we go down to the state of Ohio. We got three competitive districts. Steve Chabot, don't like him. He'll probably win by a point or so. J.R. Majewski, a lot of people are saying Majewski's done because of some scandal that came out. That scandal's been debunked. It's not true. Guys, chill the fuck out. It's not true. It's been debunked. So, I don't know why the fuck that happened. I think Majewski should sue, because that's bullshit. Some, like, false narrative we put out. I think Majewski probably ends up winning by a likely margin. Probably five points or more. He'll, like, he's a good fit for the district, like MRC Captor is. He'll do well. Next up, Ohio's 13th. Anthony Gonzalez is retiring. Neither, like, Amelia Skies is a good candidate for this district. Soto, not so much. Uh, I think Jisoto will win by seven points or more due to the environment and nothing else. Okay. Next up, we go down to Oregon. Oh, my God. So close. So fucking close. Like, I'm begging and praying Alex Garlados wins this district, but it doesn't seem likely. I think Val Hole will end up winning by, like, a point. Please, dear God, let this district flip, but it doesn't look like it's happening. Oregon's fifth, however, like, I will trade everything. Like, Democrats can have the majority. Just give me Alex Carlottis in Congress. Uh, in Oregon's fifth district, uh, Kurt Schrader was primaried by a progressive Jamie McLeod Skinner, and she's running against a right-winger nationalist, Laura Chavez de Reamer. De Reamer probably wins by around a point. McLeod Skinner's not a good fit for the district. Neither is de Reamer, but the national environment will carry her. De Reamer. Or the finish line. Oregon 6th, Andre, Andrea Salinas will probably end up winning this by around 3 points. Mike Erickson's not running a good campaign, in my opinion. Now we go down to Pennsylvania. We're almost done, guys. Almost done. Brian Fitzpatrick, he wins by safe margin. Very popular here. Chrissy Houlihan, uh, she'll probably end up winning by a lean margin, anywhere from 4 to 3 to 4 points. Susan Wild, she'll lose at least a Scheller by like 8 points. Very unpopular. Matt Cartwright. 
has become super unpopular ever since like Biden took office. I don't like Jim Bognet for petty reasons, but Jim Bognet's probably going to win by a safe margin. Next up, the Pennsylvania's 12th district. I honestly think this will be close, but it'll be safe. A lot of Democrats are going to vote for Mike Doyle because he shares the congressman's name, and that's going to be fucking hilarious. It'll be even funnier if Mike Doyle ended up winning. Jesus Christ, it would be hilarious. But I think... <laughs> I think it's summerly safe, all right? I don't... It'll be hilarious if Mike Doyle won, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, Pennsylvania 17th, uh, Jeremy Schaffer should end up winning by around three points. A very white working class district. Next up, Pennsylvania's 4th district, Madeline Dean will be in a very... In the closest race in her entire career. She'll win by nine points, uh, which ain't too bad. Ain't too bad. Okay, onward. Next up, the state of Rhode, where to go, where to go, Rhode Island. Uh, Alan Fung, he should win likely, if not safe. He'll win by eight points or more. Seth Magaziner is not running a good candidate. Alan Fung is leading in a state that underestimates Republicans by close to double digits. Take a look at 2020 polling; it severely underestimated Trump and every other Republican on the ballot. Um, Alan, I, I don't know why he's still running. Alan wonders why are you running against David Sislin? He's going to fucking clobber you, son, like Jack Reed did. Uh, next up, we go down to state of Tennessee. Tennessee's fifth, Andy Ogles, a mayor from a town in this district, is a really good candidate, while Heidi Campbell's not a good candidate. Ogles will win by around 21 points. He'll win by over 20 points. Are you serious? <laughs> next up, the state of Texas. All three Rio Grande Valley districts are up. And honestly, Republicans are in good shape to win all three, but I don't think it's going to happen. Texas 15th, that's going to be safe. Don't question it. She'll win by 10 points or more. Texas 28th, Cassie Garcia. Sweller has a lot of, you know, he's got a lot of moderate appeal, but I, the national environment is just way too big. I think Garcia ends up winning by around two points or more. Now, I know a lot of people are saying Myra Flores is in a good position to win, but I don't see it. Like, how do you see Myra Flores winning this district? A Biden plus 15th district. I honestly think this is going to be lean Democrat. Vincent Gonzalez is going to win by around two to three points. But I really don't see Flores winning. I just, I, I don't. I'm sorry. Like, I don't see it. Now we go down to the state of Virginia, where we have four competitive districts. Elaine Luria's district, Jen Kagan, she'll probably end up beating uh, Luria by five points or more. This is a Yunkin district, a district Yunkin fucking crushed Terry McAuliffe Next up, Abigail Spanberger's district. This one's going to be close. Uh, this is going to be tilt Republican. Yes, Lee Vega is running as a very popular incumbent congresswoman. Another person I am begging and pleading wins. Hung Chow is a really good candidate. <laughs> However, I do think Wexton wins by six points or more. It's a five plus 18th district. I, I know, but I know, upsetting. Now we go down to the state of Washington, the second to last state we'll cover. And we have four competitive districts. Uh, Joe Kent, he should win by double digits. No question about it. Matt Larkin should end up beating Kim Schreier by around two points. Kim Schreier is an underperformer. Always has been. Derek Kilmer, he's going to be in a competitive district. A very competitive, a somewhat competitive district. I mean, he'll win by six points. Uh, Marilyn Strickland, she's facing off against Keith Swank. Keith Swank is a great name. You have to say it like that. Keith Swank. Uh, she'll win by around 8 points. Strickland, not Swank. Next up, uh, Wisconsin. Like, Brad Path is a good candidate, but Derek Van Orden is an even better candidate. Well, Van Orden should end up winning by safe margin, no questions asked. Van Orden barely lost in 2020, so he should demolish Path. Path. Path? How do you pronounce that? Brad Path? Anyway, so this is my current prediction, heading into my final prediction in November. Republicans win 246 congressional districts, while Democrats have 189. Hell, you could give Democrats every single tilt and lean Republican seat, and Republicans would still have a majority. But Democrats would need them likely Republican seats if they wanted that majority still. Anyway, what do you guys think of my prediction? Do you think it's bullshit? Do you think it's accurate? Tell me down in the comments below. This is the Catholic one saying, peace.